going to be taking part in a big event that's happening starting just a few kilometers down the road that way, the Vermont 100. Um, I knew I was going to be in the U.S. around this time uh, anyway, and when I heard my friend Alan was running the Vermont 100, I asked, do you have a pacer? He's like, no, so can I be me? <laughs> it really, I felt like I invited myself to be someone's best man, you know, like, I'll be there for the last 30 miles of his 100 mile run, and it feels like an, just an awesome responsibility. So yeah, make a little video about that and, and share that with the world. So we're doing a little shakeout run in the woods here, heading over to see where the start line area is. We'll be over there later because they don't open registration until 10. But figured might as well. Check it out. Yeah. Bounce around, shake out the nerves. Got an extra surprise this morning. It's Alan's birthday. Kept that secret. I want to thank you guys all for coming and welcome you to the lovely state of Vermont. Um, and join us for the 31st annual Vermont 100. Soaking up this lovely countryside. Now me, I'm going back to bed. It's 9.45, we got our first report in from the crew that saw Alan go through the first aid station. There he is, eating a PB&J, which is good news. Didn't really tell much um, other than looking and feeling good. All right, crew chief Anna, how's, how's our boy doing? Alan is doing great. He started out strong. He's keeping on time perfectly. He's keeping his 12-minute uh, um, uh, mile pace, as he had indicated, and he looked really good both at the first aid station after about 20 miles and then another 10 or so. He continued to look strong. It's getting hotter. It's getting hot out there. It was in the sun. It was exposed, but um, he took it. He's been taking in good events of fluids. He uh, iced up and stuffed his sun sleeves with ice and swapped out his t-shirt and put on a cold cap and uh, sponged down and took off into the sunlight, um, feeling cool and strong. So we're looking forward to seeing him soon at mile 48. We're a little bit behind schedule from what we wanted to be, but we're now headed to the aid station Margaritaville, which is one aid station, one crude aid station, before, uh, before I'm able to start running with him. So Jen driving out that way and we're excited to go see Alan and how he's doing. He's moving through this heat still, which is, God, I can only imagine what he's feeling right now. But I guess we'll see him soon, we'll find out. Yeah, we were, I guess we were debating like, like here, he said he wanted to sit down, he said he wanted to look at his feet, and he might start taking caffeine here. Um, so I think this might be an aid station where a lot, a lot happens. Lot. How you doing, buddy? Excellent. We're around the corner here. Yeah. Thank you. All right. All right. Jen, you've seen Alan in more races than anyone. How, how do you think he's doing? How do you think he fares compared to his standard? Look pretty good, Seventy miles. miles in, powering up the hills. Seventy-two, 72 miles. What is it? This is a real climb. Yeah, doing a real climb now. Glow sticks hanging on the trees, saying, hey, nighttime is coming.
after midnight. We're into day two. Still finding some running on the flat stuff. This whole thing is just crazy beautiful and like the headlamp doesn't show you but there's the moon. Yeah, Mount Ascutney right there. You can't see it, it's, but trust me, the moon is lighting up this beautiful forest. And we're under the trees here and underneath the trees and into this meadow. And there's a valley over there and the moon above it all. It's just gorgeous. It's 4.15 in the morning. Alan has been going hard for 24 hours, man. Feels bad. Yeah, yeah, that's what counts, it's hey? Harder than first. It is the last race, last endurance race in the US where horses and humans run simultaneously. <laughs> well, someone dropped a riding crop. I have to say, as a pacer, it's incredibly handy for me. Come on, Alan. Let's finish this.